How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation. It's time to get those creative sparks flying. It's time to get that imagination running wild. And it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from Coleman Moser. And if you're not familiar with his work, check right over here. He was a phenomenal um, Austrian artist uh, who really helped shape and define and bend the whole um, Art Nouveau movement. And uh, he did some amazing work. A lot of stuff um, that he worked on was really uh, kind of commercial stuff, but definitely um, just a master of one of my favorite styles of, of art, for sure. Uh, I just love the, the way that he breaks the form down into these simple yet complex shapes. And uh, that leads into kind of the quote that I found from him, which uh, there isn't a ton that I could find that was, uh, I usually try to find something that's in the artist's own words, and uh, this was the one that uh, I could find uh, from him, and that was, uh, simplicity lies not in omission, but in synthesis, and uh, I think that's a really interesting subject that we haven't really talked about before. I know that I mentioned before kind of the uh, K-I-S-S, the keep it simple, uh, stupid kind of mentality. Um, of, you know, just focus on the basics, focus on the meat of what your um, creative piece is about, you know, and, and keep it keep it simple. But I think this goes to the next step of that, which is that um, simplicity doesn't lie in omission, so it's not about cutting things out and having nothing there, but rather in synthesizing so that you can have these complex actions or movements or sounds or anything, but they all unify into one simple understandable form and that's a difficult thing to do um, you know that's when you hit that master level of working when uh, you know if, like you're making a meal you know it's not just like okay well I'm keeping it simple and, and easy it's just a chicken breast no but it's about having you know like the chicken work with the rice work with the you know vegetable and all that stuff so that it comes together and it's a simple meal but yet it has different complex pieces that all work together to have, you know, a, a delicious course all together. Um, so I think that's just a phenomenal thing. Definitely check out more about uh, Coleman Moser if you can. Um, I will link to a few things down below, but unfortunately there's not a ton uh, that I was able to find, at least from, from uh, free resources. So uh, let me know in the comments below if you guys find more stuff, because I'd love to, to uh, delve into more of uh, his work, because I think it's, it's really uh, phenomenal and definitely someone I'd love to study more. That makes sense. let's go ahead and dive into our animation for today. Uh, we are using the Bull Creature Rig. It's a free rig that you can grab over at Creative Crash, which again will be in the description below if you guys want to try it out for yourselves and check it out. And if you're not familiar with what we'll be doing for the rest of the video, it gives ourselves 48 frames. That's uh, two seconds of animation. I go off and I find a uh, different rig every day to uh, have a free resource for you guys to try out and play around with. And uh, it also creates some, some interesting uh, challenges and uh, fun things to talk about because uh, I've never used these rigs before either so every time I play with them you know I just try to open the file and then dive right in here with you so you guys can see the whole creative process along the way and then it allows you not only to um, you know maybe learn something along the way if you're new to animation but also uh, if you're more professional more advanced or you know the higher level um, get you that creative and uh, critical mind going so you can say you know what they, he did it this way but I would have done it that way instead or oh that was an interesting way to do that I wouldn't have thought of that or just different things like that um, so overall the whole goal of this series and these uh, daily videos is to hopefully um, make you feel like you have an art body going through uh, everything with you and also uh, to hopefully inspire you guys to go off and create your own work and when you do don't forget to share it back down below so I can uh, give you some thumbs up and some encouragement and uh, help promote you along the way as well Alright, so that being said, let's go ahead and dive in here. So first thing I want to do is create a polygon primitives. Let's just create a cube. And just so we have a ground plane to work with. And I was thinking for this one, I might want to lift up the front a little more. I'm kind of looking up here. Maybe bring it back down a little bit. Take that up a little more just to try to find more of an interesting pose that we could do with this guy.
I usually like to have rotates on here, but sometimes they put translations on there. That's okay, you just gotta work with what you got on the trick. And let's go ahead and bring that foot forward and that foot back here. This one can go back a little bit, this one can go forward just a little bit. Now, one thing we have to to uh, save multiple versions in the save often, and we are using Autodesk Maya uh, 2014 uh, for this video today as well. Phenomenal program. Again, there will be uh, more about it in the description below. It's kind of dark in here, so I keep going the light. Okay. And let's get started. Let's do those uh, feet and those hips here. I think we're going to keep our timing fairly simple with this one. So we'll work with like a base 12 kind of a system. steps in the back and little steps in the front here. And just the tips forward. Okay, and let's go to the next one. extra stuff to help uh, bring into that illusion of life. The real important parts are the feet and the hips, that's for sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this.
steps in the back I don't like this one feels good. I think we need to have overall a bit more movement there. Because I want those steps to feel even. this step here. Push that forward a bit more. That's about right, so let's go and look at it there. So this step needs to be a little more forward. So the spacing was pretty good between the feet overall. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, grab all of these. And we're just going to make sure we have those keys locked in place here. And let's get the passing positions working here.
hips working in conjunction with how we have the feet moving. And again, let's go ahead and squash that down and even it out a little bit more. Let's go ahead and see that now. I should do a video about trying to have good posture while animating. It's a difficult thing if you uh, animate a lot, you know, especially when I, you know, drawing and animating are two things where I'm very focused and very, so make sure you get up and stretch a lot and uh, do some good exercising all the time so that uh, you can build those muscles. If you look at um, a lot of the older animators, most of them had, um, not all of them, but they good portion of them has suffered from kind of bad posture if you ever watch them. They always have those rolled shoulders and kind of a little bit of a hunch over. So I guess it kind of goes with the territory, but it's good to try and be aware of that stuff just for health. Because if you're not healthy, you can't work as much. Okay, now let's go ahead. which would normally just be like kind of a chest controller and they split them up into like a neck and a swing controller I guess so I'll have to kind of blend the two a little bit more see if we can use it just to kind of offset what we have from the hips style for sure. Definitely some interesting approaches to how it's rigged, but nothing we can't figure out.
hips a little bit more. One thing with jaws, you have to be careful. If you do too much of them, it looks like they're like trying to talk or like they're got a chatter to them. And if you just want a little bit of delay and stuff, you or uh, drag, you just gotta do a little bit of it. This is that thing that I talk about sometimes with uh, Jaws, is that you have usually a rotation and a translation. You want to try and blend the two a little bit. So it's not just up and down, but it's uh, got a little arc to it. Okay, let's 
once again go in and we'll cut that back a whole lot as well. Minimize it. Minimize. 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 Let me comments below. a little too over exaggerated from the side to get it over that. Uh, so let's still tone it down. But I think that's probably going to work for me. I kind of want to feel like doing more of a side view. Maybe a three quarter view, but not a head on. For this one, just the ring doesn't shine really at a head on angle. So probably something like this. Let's clean that up a little bit. 
But I think yeah, the basic idea is there, so we can always just scale it back. first, so let's go ahead and kind of mimic the second one a little bit more.
some variation between them, but we also want a little bit of uniformity, so it doesn't feel like there's a big step and a little step here. And usually, if you've done something a couple of times, you can find kind of where you want a good medium spot to be, and chances are that's probably what you're looking for. as well as I would prefer if it was more of a rotation style of a tail rather than a translation style. I feel like that works a little bit better, at least for what I'm uh, more used to working with tails as. I think overall that worked pretty well, so let's go ahead and kind of find a good camera. camera angle and let's create a cube here just for a different background color here look through our perspective again and assign a new material to it let's put a lambert on there Yeah, 
let's assign um, the new material to the floor as well. And we'll go with kind of a dirty brown kind of a color. Okay, let's go ahead and turn our nerve curves off. Let's take a look back at where we started. We we're looking at uh, Coleman Moser, and uh, he's a phenomenal um, Austrian uh, illustrator and uh, designer uh, who, uh, who said, Simplicity lies not in omission but in synthesis. And I think that's a, a phenomenal quote to think about. I know it's been kind of floating around in my head all day since I was doing some research last night, finding that to share with you guys. And uh, just the complexity that's in that kind of a quote, in that, um, you know, Having things feel simple doesn't necessarily mean they're simple. It means usually people who can draw things that seem easy and simple, usually there's a, a whole lot of care and exercise and study that's gone into making things feel simple. Um, you know, if you watch, you know, one of the great Disney animators and you watch some of their old stuff everyone will say oh you know that those designs feel very simple but to get those you know those nice curves in there and to get the nice movement and arcs and stuff throughout that I mean compared to you know something where you look at like a giant robot mech animation or something where it's got all these little intricate parts and everything you can kind of um, I mean, there's validity in both of it, but I think sometimes keeping things simple and keeping things more universal and uh, making it so that everything's kind of relatable to your audience and that it can resonate with, you know, younger audiences or older audiences and then it's just got kind of that universal truth usually means that there's probably been some sort of a, uh, a focus on more complex things and, and bringing them down to their, their base form so that uh, it can be enjoyed by a lot of people. And I think that's a definitely a challenge that I'm gonna, you know, I, I always think about that whole uh, keep it simple um, mentality in art so that, you know, you don't get lost in, in details. But I think along with that, you know, and this, this is a great quote, you know, keeping it simple doesn't mean that you just cut stuff out, but rather that you uh, kind of hone in on what's important and synthesize that so that you have a great piece that's got complexity and depth, but the idea in of itself uh, can seem simple. Uh, so let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I know it's a little rambly. I'm not sure that I've, I've completely um, wrapped my head around all the intricacies that are in this uh, this quote uh, today, but uh, I think it's definitely something to think about, and uh, I look forward to hearing if you guys have any comments or ideas uh, on that as well. And again, if you guys do end up using this rig or any sort of stuff that you guys are creating, definitely uh, feel free to share it down below. I'm happy to uh, you know, give you any thumbs up or likes or anything that I can do to help promote you guys as well. And uh, thanks again for all of the comments and subscribes and for liking and just being a great uh, little community. You guys are awesome and I love you so much. Um, and that being said, I will see you for some more animation tomorrow.